Welcome everyone, I'm The Depressed Eeyore, and this is Sid Meier's Civilization V, The Brave New World. This is the newest of expansions to the Civilization V um, game, I guess. Um, and I've been tossing around in my head whether I was going to actually do a video or not. Originally I said I was, and I was like, I don't know. But I have nothing better to do, so I'll make a video. It's also right now 11.40pm, so I apologize if I start making mistakes. Obviously, it's probably because I'm tired. Anyway, um, I so far I've played two full games. I played a bunch of games before then, um, which I just stopped and started a new game, just kind of get my get a new feel of the uh, changes they've made to the game. Um, overall, it's pretty good. It definitely flushes out stuff and makes uh, pretty much all the um, uh, methods of winning the game a little bit more interesting. Um, the only thing that hasn't really changed too much is science um, for the for the most part anyway. But I'll go into that more in detail as we go along. Um, there's also um, two new scenarios. Um, there's the American Civil War and something else. I tried out the American Civil War because it sounded interesting. Um, it's alright, but it's timed. I don't really like timed scenarios. I'm not even, for all I know, all of them could be timed. I've never done any of the uh, scenarios before, but I tried out the American Civil War. You can play as either Confederates or the um, the uh, Union, and um, but you still you still have to deal with the time limit, which is a little annoying. Anyway, let's go ahead and do uh, set up a game. And um, something to note: um, when I got um, Brave New World, it resetted all my advanced setups. So uh, be sure to uh, change whatever change whatever you need uh, whenever you get the patch or whatever. Anyway, um, the only thing I had to make sure to turn off was time, because I hate time. Because nothing annoys me more than winning the game, uh, losing the game, simply because someone has a higher score than you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stick with standard continents, standard size, Prince difficulty. Um, the AI has gotten better. Um, I can't really describe it. Uh, Turtle Biscuit said the AI was has become less aggressive, though I've kind of noticed that they've become a lot more aggressive in my, in my, in my games anyway. They uh, definitely declare war often on each other as well as on you if you have pissed them off or just be in the way. So it's uh, pretty pretty neat. As for how I'm going to play this, I have really no clue. That was kind of the reason why I was reluctant to play a vid uh, do a video of this. Um, so what I did was I just took up the chance. There are 43, 43 civs in this game, and I've played five of them since I've started my Let's Play channel. So um, I went ahead and did a, ra a random number generator, which I just found on the internet because I didn't feel like coding right at the moment. Um, so the numbers I got were 41, 7, and 29. And uh, what's going to work is if it's someone I've played before, I'm just going to go to the next number. So I'm hoping out of these three numbers, one of them is one I haven't played yet. So I'll go over um, all the new characters, all the new civs in a, in a little bit. First things first, though. Let's see, 41. So that means it's all the way at the bottom. 43, 42, 41. Washington. Never played as Washington before. Okay, I'll play as Washington. Alright, we'll go ahead and go over the new characters. Uh, let's see, we got Morocco, also known as Almad al Masur. Receives plus three gold and plus one culture for each trade route with a different civ or city state. The trade route owners receive plus two gold for each trade route sent to Mor uh, Morocco. So, trade routes is a new thing they've added to the game. Um, I'll go into that more in detail, but this guy is all about trade and quite frankly uh, other civs will actually like him because you'll if you make trade with his, um, I'm assuming his capital, um, you'll get extra gold, which is kind of neat. Um, whenever you do trade routes, you'll generally get gold, uh, you'll get more gold back, but the people that you send the trade routes to will generally get some uh, benefit as well, usually gold and sometimes even religion or science. You also trade within your own borders if you really want to, just to trade like food and uh, food and hammers. But um, like I said, well, I guess I just explained it, didn't I? Anyway, uh, Berber Cavalry and Kazba, I don't really know anything about this. Kazba, I believe, is an improvement, a tile improvement, that is. Uh, do, 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 do. What else we got? Ah, Ashur Panapal uh, of Assyria. 
When a city is conquered, gain a free technology already discovered by its owner. Gaining a city through a trade deal does not count and it can only happen once per any new city. So naturally this guy is kind of a warmonger and if he does well enough he'll be able to keep up in tech despite the fact he's focusing on things like um, offense. He also has the Royal Library which I don't, I'm, I'm assuming it's just an upgraded library. Probably something along the lines of um, what China has, maybe something even better. Uh, they also have a sheets, Siege Tower, which I've seen, but I've never actually uh, looked up the stats of. Uh, but this, I believe it's an early, it replaces maybe the Catapult, kind of like the Battering Ram. So it's probably something really good for taking over cities in the early game. Uh, these guys you've seen, seen, ah, uh, Casimir III of Poland. Uh, you receive a free social policy when, it, when you advance to the next era. Um, they have, I think they've added a few new eras. And as in, they just kind of added some divisions, or divisions in the, uh, through the middle game, I guess. Middle and late game. Um, but even with that, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's free, it's pretty much an essential, you know, free policy every time you increase a, cer a certain amount in tech. But, hey, can't complain. Um, Wayne Kosar, it looks like a type of cavalry, which I've never used. And then the Ducal Stable, which is, uh, probably an upgraded stable. Do -do 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 -do. What else we got? Ah, Enrico Dundalo of Venice. Cannot gain settlers nor annex city, uh, cities. Double the num normal number of trade routes available. A merchant of Venice appears after researching optics. May purchase uh, may purchase in populated cities. So their special unit is actually a great person. Um, your great merchant is replaced with a merchant of Venice, which is essentially just like a... Um, it might be a slightly upgraded, well it's obviously upgraded, but um, I think it gets a little bit more money than a normal great merchant whenever doing the uh, trade deals with um, you know, city states. But you can also use, um, use a merchant of Venice to completely buy out a um, city state and get in, uh, it becomes yours. You just get, you just get a free city. Um, but if you do this, um, if you take over any cities or you buy out any cities with the Merchant of Venice, um, those cities are permanently um, puppet. So you can't actually, um, so you can't actually, um, you know, control what they build. But puppeted cities, as Venice, you can actually buy, uh, speed purchase. So you can, if you want to, you can you kind of force um, them to have certain buildings by just buying it. Or if you just need troops, you can just immediately buy from the puppeted cities. So not too bad. Um, Venice by itself is pretty good, uh, simply because you get double the number of trade routes. You can only have so many trade routes, and Venice gets a ridiculous amount. Um, I think about halfway through, maybe like a third of the way through the tech, uh, tech tree, assuming you get certain um, wonders, you can have like 12 to 18 freaking trade routes going, which is a lot of income. Uh, Gaja Amada of Indonesia, um, he is... Oh, sorry, I didn't talk about the Great Gallius. That's just an upgraded Gallius. I think it has maybe slightly more damage, but it also takes more to build. Uh, Gaja Mada of Indonesia. The first three, uh, fir sorry, first three cities founded on continents other than where Indonesia started each provide two unique luxury resources and can never be raised. So they, this is probably the only um, sieve that can actually get um, luxury resources um, that no other sieve can get. Usually you go and get such uh, like, uh, resources from city-states, but this guy can actually get it by just settling off-continent. And since you're getting automatically two unique luxury resources every time you do it, those cities are essentially free as far as uh, happiness is concerned, which is pretty nice. Uh, Crush Swordsman, I've seen these guys before, but I don't... Oh, I remember what these guys do. Um, these guys have something called... I think it's called like Magic Sword or something like that, which is kind of a dumb name, but um, what they do have is this ability called Magic Sword where if they survive their first combat, they get a random trait, which can be positive or negative, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's a similar effect in um, the Civil War scenario where every, every single troop you have can uh, get a random trait or get a random general, which gives it a random trait. So um, I didn't really see too much of this because I, th I pretty much slaughtered Indonesia when I was playing as um, as uh, Japan. So I don't know. And he has candy. I have no idea what that is. All right, what else we got? Uh, da -da -da -da. Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden gained 90 influence with a great person gift to a city state. 
When declaring friendship, Sweden and their friend gain a 10% boost to great person generation. Okay, that's cool. So you want to be friends with this guy because he'll give you more um, great person generation. I don't know really about gifting my great people to a city state though. Quite frankly, you kind of want to keep that for your own good. Also, if you follow the um, the, uh, what was it, the civic tree, you can pretty much get great people from city states. So I don't know. Um, Hakapelita looks like a cavalry type. And Carolian, which looks like a musket type. It's kind of hard to tell with these, uh, the size of these things. Um, Hail Selassie of Ethiopia has combat bonus plus 20% when fighting units from a civilization with more cities than Ethiopia. So he actually does really good against bigger um, opponents. He has also got a special building, the steel, and the Mahal Safari. Apologize for going kind of slow. It's been a uh, Kind of like explaining things, as you probably have known already if you've watched my videos. Da -da -da. There's special beam cannon. All right, Maria the first of Portugal. Resource diversity grants twice as much gold uh, for Portugal and trade routes. Um, the amount of gold you get from trade routes is based on a few things. There's some buildings that boost it. Um, also, kind of like your diversity. Well, as it says, if you have a whole lot of resources. And the person you're sending it to has a um, has different resources or less resources. Um, you will get more money. So the more resources more resources you have that they don't have, um, the more money you'll get whenever you do a trade. So this is doubled, which is pretty good. Um, looks like that's a special frigate the now or whatever. And there's the Fiat Tutoria, which is, it uh, looks like a, just a special tile improvement. Do, 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 stuff we got all Monty. Let's see. Because, uh, no, these we have before. Pedro II to Brazil. Tourism output is a ten, plus 100% during their golden ages. Earn great artists, musicians, and writers 50% faster during their golden ages. Tourism is a new thing they've added to the game. It's what's changed the there's no longer um when doing a culture victory it's no longer get five full trees of uh, civics and then build the utopia instead they've changed the civic trees a little bit some of them most of it's the same but they've added some new ones and taken out some of the old ones and changed them to, into a different mechanic but the way the um culture works now is culture is more of a defense against tourism than an actual um, method of victory through culture um, tourism is what you have to build instead, and you have to build it from over um, your opponents. So every opponent you visit, um, if you have any tourism, you'll start, you'll start to get, uh, build tourism with that uh, that uh, civilian. Oh, sorry, civilian civilization. But um, as you're doing this, your opponents are also building up culture, and if you're not keeping up with that. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. So it's become a lot more active for doing a culture victory now. You kind of have to do, uh, for one thing, you have to find all the civs. Because um, you can't build tourism with civs you haven't met yet. So it's uh, pretty interesting. So this guy's all about culture victories. Um, tourism by itself doesn't do anything besides promote your um, victories. And getting tourism is a little bit more difficult than getting culture now. So. That is something. Uh, special unit looks like a special infantry. Uh, Prasinta or Prasina. Uh, Brazelwood camp is a special sort of camp. It actually gets some pretty good bonuses later in the tech tree because I keep seeing it pop up, but um, I don't really know much beyond that. Uh, Pocotello um, of the Shoshone, which is a Native American tribe. Founded cities start with additional territory. Um, I'm not sure the exact, but they do start out with a pretty nice blob of territory whenever you plop down a city. This includes your starting ter your starting city. So when you plop down that first city, you'll have just a whole lot of expansion already done. It's really nice. It's really good for uh, planting new cities as well. Also, unit receives a combat bonus when fighting in within their own territory, which is always good. That means you're good at defending. Now. I don't know much about the Comanche Riders, but they, they're Pathfinder. Now what's kind of also unique about Pocotello is, unlike other civs, 
he doesn't start out with a warrior, he starts out with a pathfinder. And a pathfinder is not a warrior, it's actually an upgraded scout. And pathfinders have 8 strength, which is the exact same as a warrior, so their scouts are as strong as warriors. Also, pathfinders, whenever they find um, ruins, you know, pretty much goody huts, they can pick from a list what benefit they get from it. So, usually, when I tried out Pocatello, I found my first ruin, I chose get a free technology. And then the next one, it gave me a list of like five options again, but it didn't have, you know, technology in the list any anymore. So you can't really, it's pretty good at making sure that you can't just pick technology every time. So I end up being th doing things like, you know, I pick technology and then culture and then, you know, faith and then something else and then maybe some population and then eventually tech will come back up and I'll be like, okay, get another free tech. It's really good, assuming you can find, you know, goody huts before everyone else does. But um, yeah, it's pretty nice. And Pathfinders can actually hold their own against Barbarians because they have 8 strength. Pretty good. Anyway, uh, do, do, do Shaka. Shaka is pretty much well known in Civ 4 for being a big jerk. And he's pretty much still a big jerk because of his stuff. He's all about war. Melee units cost 50% less maintenance, which means you can, ha you can field an army without worrying about the cost as much. All units also require 25% has experienced it earned their next promotion. That means he can not only field a bigger army without worry of cost, but they also level up faster. He also has the MP, which I believe is a special spear unit, maybe? I don't remember. I know in Civ 4 they are well known for their really er uh, kind of powerful early game unit, and they are all and Chaka is generally just really aggressive AI. Um, and the Konda, I have no idea what that is. Special building or something, I don't know. Anyway. Go ahead and continue. We got William of Netherlands. He is uh, retains 50% of. Nope, nope. This is never mind. Netherlands is from uh, Gods and Kings. Okay, so that's everybody. All right, I uh, like the list picked. I got Washington. What are the other ones? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, Germany. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, just Babylon. Yeah, I think Washington, so Washington will be fine. I mean, I could show off one of the nooses, but honestly, that's it's really all about the mechanics here. So, we'll go with Washington. Alright. And after wasting about 20 minutes of your time, we'll finally get this started. Welcome, President Washington. You lead the industrious American civilization. Formed in the conflagration of revolution in the 18th century, within a hundred years, the young nation became embroiled in a terrible civil war that nearly tore the country apart. But it was just a few short years later, in the 20th century, that the United States reached the height of its power, emerging triumphant and mighty from the two terrible wars that destroyed so many other great nations. The United States is a nation of immigrants filled with optimism and determination. They lack only a leader to help them fulfill their promise. President Washington, can you lead the American people to greatness? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? I sure hope so. I think I've played as Washington on my own. I think once, <laughs> maybe. I don't really play him. Um, so main benefit is I actually have bigger visibility, and it's really helpful for fighting goody huts. It also looks like I'm in, a, in pretty much inland, and I am surrounded by jungle, which is not the best situation to start in. I do start with marble though. That's kind of nice. All right, let's uh, go ahead and settle in place. We'll get a scout real quick. Yeah, it's really old. Okay. So our biggest issue right now is the fact we don't... We're, sort of, we're near jungle. I was not expecting that. So that's kind of a bad start for us. Alright. Well, one thing we can do... 
is we're gonna go ahead and just go straight for masonry. That way we can get that marble. And fortunately, we're gonna have to um, see about doing some other stuff. Um, the tech tree hasn't changed too much in the early game. It's pretty much all the same. It's, well, there's obviously some new stuff, like um, Campbell Husbandry has the caravan and it starts you on trade routes. Um, further along though, they've changed the end game a bit. Um, pretty much internet for uh, culture victory, globalization helps out with uh, political victory, and then of course there's the uh, science victory stuff, as well as the <laughs> XCOM squad, really. That's about it. It's not too bad. Anyway, let's see what sort of madness we can get ourselves into. God, I love this additional range. One slight radius is pretty good. Just plus one. I think I'm blowing in my mic. I apologize. Right off the bat, we get pottery. Say to him that fashioneth it. Nice. That was a. And there's ruins down here too. Good stuff. I believe we have uh, seven opponents. Maybe eight. I don't remember. And we just upgraded to a spearman with that uh, ruin. That's good. And it looks like our neighbor's down here. It looks like Russia. Fortunately, getting over there is kind of an issue. Which means I probably should explore this the other way. But I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this just to say hi. Приветствую тебя, незнакомец. Если твой ум и такт сравнимы с твоей привлекательностью, мы замечательно поладим. Hi Catherine. How you doing? Продолжай. Well, I'm definitely making more gold per turn, so that's nice. Okay, and uh, that's really all we can do. We'll head uh, this way. Meanwhile, you will head this way. Fantastic. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and get started on the worker. By the time we pick up um, masonry, our worker should be ready. We also need to pick up animal husbandry so we can get the sheep. But I really want the marble first. It's a happiness resource and it helps boost um, the rate you get wonders. It's just a map. I got found Prague. It's a uh, culture friendly. Friendly. Okay, another one. That's good. Got that plus one sight radius. That's so good. Someone's already founded a uh, pantheon and went with plus thirty. Went for a stronger city attack. Okay, whatever. Found 90 gold. Better than nothing. I haven't really just now, despite the fact I'm Washington, I still haven't really decided how I'm gonna play this, but. Oh, hello. Sou Maria, Rainha de Portugal. Já nos conhecemos? Pareceis-me familiar. Ou talvez não. So this is Maria the first of Portugal, or a new, a new character. And it looks like she's to our north, which means we're pretty much done with our exploring, it looks like. Unfortunately. And 
And there's a city state down there, and he, yeah, they picked up the, uh, and, and we got Genghis Khan of Mongolia. So, so far we have three neighbors. That's fantastic. Definitely gonna need to settle some uh, territory. Oh. I like how the barbarians just like built a camp right behind me. Well, I'll take them on, I guess. Really all I can do. Oh, so evil. I really want that. My V eu bidig, bren hines a keltiaid, paid yet nib am tam brishoi. Gabotica of the Celt. She's probably the one that has the um, pantheon. And I think I'm about to get chomped by a freaking barb. Hey, I did I did pretty I did reasonably okay there. Fortunately I gotta retreat. I could try looping around, but it's pretty iffy. Alright. How are we doing here? So I'm thinking I'll settle a city probably on the coast, because I definitely need a coastal city. Just haven't decided where yet. Sorry for you if you wanted to see the fight, but it's pretty much straightforward. I have a strength 11 character, so not really an issue. I want that ruin. Hey, we leveled. Um, go one. I'm kind of assuming most of you guys are familiar with civilization overall, so I'm not explaining too much. Eh, I'll explain it anyway. Drill one just allows you to do extra. Um, you do better in uh, rough terrain, which is stuff like forest and hills and stuff. Gosh, gotta explain everything. So I'm I fortified here, got me some health back, and I'm trying to make a push for that over here. Yep, got it. Twenty culture, awesome. So now we can get ourselves our first civic. Oh, by the way, I need to go over that, but I'll take a look at that later. Well, there's actually a button for culture. Okay. Um, there are a lot of um. There's a lot of new things, to say the least. Um, I'll try to go over it as we go along. Hey, port. Okay. Alright, so... Most of these are the same. Got uh, Tradition, Liberty, Honor, Piety. Though you actually can get access to Piety right off the bat. Uh, patronage, you get at the Classical Era. Uh, still the same, um, but the commerce has changed a bit. It's um, they kind of split. They've changed. They split and changed some things between commerce and put it into exploration. So a lot of the stuff involving like naval travel and sight radius and stuff is in exploration, as well as stuff like bonuses to coastal cities. That's all exploration. Um, so exploration is all about coastal cities and naval battles and um, sea trade routes and commerce is all about land trade routes and general merchant stuff so yeah also yeah and aesthetics is all about culture though it's a little bit different now you no longer get free culture you know you no longer get two free policies now it's now just reduces the cost of all policies um, Another thing to note is tr some of the each of these um, policies that you go into unlocks a unlocks a wonder that you can't otherwise get 
For example, um, the only way you can build the Hanging Gardens now is if you go Tradition. The only way you can build the Pyramids is if you go Liberty. And if you go Honor, you can get the Statue of Zeus. You can get the Great Mosque as Piety. You can get the Uffizi, or however it's pronounced. And so forth. So yeah, you can't get access to um, all the wonders right off the bat. Um, you would have to get certain uh, policies. And then they've taken what used to be... Um, was it freedom, order, and autocracy, and put them as ideologies, which you don't get unlocked until either you get three factories, which you can get in the industrial era, or if you reach the modern era, whichever comes first. And doing that will get you access to um, an ideology. And if you are, if you are the first to unlock an ideology, you'll get three to, uh, two free. Um, policies that you can uh, put into that ideology. Um, ideologies kind of are like really, they're like a rank tree system. Um, and you can use your social policies that you get through culture on your ideologies. Or if you want, you can just stick with your just so usual so social policies. But the ideologies generally are designed to help you in the end game. So it's a good idea to go ahead and focus towards, uh, well, you have to focus on one. Um, you can change your ideology, but doing so will cause things like up upheaval and stuff, very similar to what would happen if you changed your uh, religion or um, uh, civic policy in uh, Civilization IV. So yeah, kind of interesting. Also, your uh, ideology, once the other civs start getting their own ideologies, um, people that have similar ideologies will generally like you more, while ones that don't will generally start to hate you a little bit more. So yeah, quite a bit going. All right, go back and get the scout to escape. Oh yeah, I need to like actually do us use one of these things. All right. Question is, is do I want to expand a lot or not? I have five neighbors. Four neighbors. I have four neighbors, which means there's five civs on one continent. I'm thinking probably a small, going small. I mean, I could go honor and try going for combat, but I'm kind of leaning away from combat simply because the combat's still the same as previously. There's a little bit of difference, but mostly just in the form of units and certain wonders. So I'm gonna go ahead and go tradition. This will get us more culture. It's designed for smaller um, ci uh, civilizations. So there you go. Oh, I gotta choose my research. Uh, we finished masonry. Yay. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and get animal husbandry. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get bronze working now, because I, if I don't, I'm not gonna be able to cut down the freaking trees. Actually, no. We'll go animal husbandry and uh, writing. I don't need the bronze working just yet. I'll need it soon, though. Declaration from Russia. They're protecting some city-state. Yep, there's our neighbor. Uh, that's Portugal right there. Genghis Khan's there. Russia's down here, which means Boudicca's probably somewhere up there, even further. Okay. Neutral mercantile. And that's the top. Okay, never mind. She's probably somewhere else. So I'm probably need to, I need to settle at least one city so I can actually have a coast. Because if I don't, I won't be able to explore, and that will be annoying. Um, politics in this game have uh, definitely been flushed out a lot more. Um, there's a lot more to do. In fact, um, going without politics at all is generally not advised because, or at least you know, ignoring it is not advised because they can really mess you up if you um, let certain policies go through. But more on that once we get there, assuming we get there. Hopefully I don't die too soon. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and have him head back so I can go heal up and all that. I might explore a little bit around there. Do -do -do. That way. Let the scout do its job. 
You're in the way, Bodica. Got another policy. Let's get ourselves a uh, free culture building. Yeah, I want the free culture building now. And, uh... I think I should go straight for a um, wonder. Actually, I don't think we can really go for wonders at all because we have no hammers. It's terrible. All right. What can we go for? Okay, we got our worker. That's good. What can we build? All right, let's go ahead and get started on the granary. I actually... I want a second warrior. I've gotten into the habit of getting a second warrior nowadays. Because um, I really have bad luck with um, barbs. Alright, so that'll get us marble, which will speed up wonders and all that good stuff. As well as get us um, hammers. About all we can go for at the moment. To do. Someone has three policies already. Other than that, we're all tied. Thou General shalt has not great. muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. All right. So that introduced us to trading. We have one trade route. And right now we have no caravans or cargo ships. Um, essentially, what you can do with those is you have to build a. What you do is you build a either a caravan or a cargo ship, and then if you're within range of a city, you can uh, send it to them, and you can and you'll trade. Uh, essentially, you'll make gold. Um, sometimes you'll make science, and sometimes you'll give them science, depending on the difference between your technologies and theirs. So um, it's pretty interesting. I'll try to show it off as soon as I actually have time to make one. They are kind of expensive in the early game. It takes a lot of hammers. But it is essentially free income. Um, the only thing you have to be careful about caravans is you don't control them directly. You just, you just send them on their way and they will actually go on a route. Like if I sent them to Prague, it would like do a route this way. And if they run into a barbarian from here, between here and there, and get raided, that caravan's gone. Um, you can also raid... Um, if you declare war on a civilization, you can actually raid their caravans, and you'll get money from it. It's actually pretty good money, like 100 gold per uh, caravan you raid. Though they're generally hard to keep up with, because caravans generally go rather quickly. But you don't have to worry about um, how long the trip will take. The moment you start the trade route, you automatically get the benefits. The, the the route is more or less just to catch them if you if you if you want to be able to do um. But the routes the routes there for to catch them or to protect them depending on which side you're on. Generally, you want to make sure you have at least full visibility on your trade route so there's no barb spawning. But you know how it is. Okay, that's Bodica. Alright, not much else to go with. I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. I'm going to go ahead and check my audio, make sure everything's alright. Um, and maybe next time I'll be a little bit more awake. But I wanted to get this started. So, I am The Depressed Dior, and this was Sid Meier's Civilization V, uh, Brave New World as George Washington. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.